Magical Makers and welcome back to my YouTube channel. I'm Nicole of Woven Tales Designs. In today's tutorial, we are going to cover another worsted weight edition version of the Ever After ears, but this is going to be a no glue version of these ears. So you can go ahead and say bye bye to these glue guns. We are going to work with our good old fashioned skills of light sewing and just a little bit of seam work. And I think you're going to love this version. It works up just as fast as these ears with the glue. So it is a great alternative if you don't want to break out your glue gun or if you want to use nicer yarns that you don't want to put glue on such as our hand dyed yarns for that extra special look skills that you do need to know for this particular set of ears it's the same as the other version of the glue version of the ears you will need to know how to work into the third loop of a stitch you will need to know how to work into the front loop of a stitch and you will also going to need to know a little bit of uh, how to seam pieces together but I'm going to walk you through everything and before you get started you do have to have four of these ear bases already worked up as well as you will need to have the bow base worked up you don't have to have the bow finished just uh, the beginning rounds of that all done um, and if you haven't done that already um, go down into my description where I have the original video of these ears listed um, it's the same instructions it's just you're gonna fasten off with a longer tail you're gonna fasten off with an 18 inch long tail for the ear bases and then you're gonna have to fasten off with just maybe six more inches of tail for the bow itself because we're using those tails to weave and sew with later on to seam everything together and on that note let's get into the materials list and see what we need to make our very own ever after sew version of these gears Alrighty, hey there, welcome to my voice here to guide you for the duration of this tutorial. Let's dive into what we'll need for our mouse ears. We are going to need yarn, the most important part here. Uh, two colors, color A, color B. Color A is represented on the right, color B is on the left. And I've left the yardage up on the screen and in the description below. You will need polyfill stuffing so that we have a little bit of a plush. And then for tools today, we're using with our worsted weight version, a five millimeter or H sized hook. That's a clover more hook there. You are going to need a curved ended tapestry needle. That is super important. That will really help with the sewing and you will absolutely need stitch markers. I need at least four when I work up this pattern, but um, it's very important to know that you're going to need them to be a locking stitch marker similar to this. So um, try to see if you can uh, snag one of those better than a paper clip in my opinion. And then we will be needing a measuring tape. Um, this will keep your work symmetrical and keep you sane and happy with the end result, I promise. <laughs> and then we will need some scissors. Scissors are standard, right? And now let's talk about those items from the original tutorial that we need to have pre-made. So you're gonna have to pre-cut two of those ear inserts, the foam ear inserts, and you absolutely can use cardboard if you want instead of foam. You're gonna need a bow, mostly what worked up except for the forming of the bow. We'll do that together in today's video. And um, you're gonna have to fasten off with a much longer tail than originally called for. I've left that up on the screen as well. So make sure that you have that ready to go and then we're gonna also need to have some ear bases and these are the circular most recognizable parts of the ear um, you're gonna have to have those fastened off with 18 inch long tails that is a non-negotiable that's the least amount of yarn that you'll need if you think you need more obviously fasten off with more um, and without further ado um, let's get started with this project kind of keep everything a little bit organized and this can get very PC. Oh, and of course I forgot to mention, you're gonna need a headband. Um, one that is one inch wide is preferable, um, especially for this pattern because we're crocheting the cover of it. So that needs means this needs to be uncovered when you start your project, all right? Okay, and that's about it. Let's get in to our pattern. Chapter one, very lovely pattern here. Uh, very easy to work up. We're gonna start with our headband cover. This is probably going to be the easiest part of this whole pattern, um, in my opinion, and uh, we won't need the headband to start, so you can go ahead and set that aside. Grab your main color yarn, or color A yarn, and you are going to work up a magic ring with that, however you know how best. Um, I tend to just wrap it around three of my fingers there, just once, and then I go ahead and 
insert my hook into the large part of that ring, grab some yarn, pull up a loop, and then I kind of regrip just like that. Now, our magic ring is going to not really have that many stitches in it, so just chain one here. You're gonna only work six single crochet into that magic ring. So one, two, three, four, five, and six. There you go. Six single crochet into the magic ring. Once those are complete, go ahead and pull on that tail tightly and get ready for round two. All right, and now we will work continuously from here on out. Rounds two and three are very simple. Um, use a stitch marker as needed here. You're gonna see me cheat with my stitch marker a little bit later, so just I apologize ahead of time. <laughs> but um, all you're doing for the next two rounds is just working single crochet in the round. One single crochet in each stitch around. And you'll also hear me use the term, it's time to Netflix and chill or Disney Plus and chill or whatever chill that is your vibe, that is where we can kind of just relax and not worry about the shaping or any of the complicated steps of the pattern. So we're kind of on that right now a little bit, but it doesn't really feel like that because that first, those first three rounds of any project are always just a little tighter than I want them to be or a little fiddlier than I want them to be. Um, as you can see me struggling here to get my hook back into that stitch. Um, so, as I'm working the first stitch up of the third round here, it, it's actually a good practice for this part of this pattern. Take this time since it's kind of like started to curl inside out here and turn your work over, kind of pull up a longer loop so it doesn't unravel and just tighten that initial magic ring tail and then knot it because we won't really need this to open back up again clearly and the shape and the type of fabric we're creating to cover the headband is a very long and skinny tube. And that tail is gonna get wrapped up all in it. It's gonna get stuck in the stitches as you work. So I just tend to nip this in the bud, literally and figuratively, and just knot and tie off that original uh, magic ring tail. Cause you won't need it for anything. For once, that's one of the only tails you will not need to use for sewing in this project. So yeah, so I'm just continuing to work up the rest of the stitches here for round three. Um, as you're watching this video and preparing your own project, I wanna know in the comments below, what kind of yarn are you planning on using for your own ears? Um, I feel like since I've started making ears, I have such a different look at my stash now, like anything is possible, um, and I love that. I love that about this project. Alrighty, so for round four, it is a pretty simple round. We are putting an increased stitch into that first stitch of the round. So two single crochet into the first stitch, continuously move your stitch marker as you move around here. And then you will work single crochet five after that. So just increase in the first stitch and then single crochet into the rest of the stitches. And that will give you one extra stitch for a total stitch count of seven stitches. And uh, I just have to do a quick apology here. My camera did not like this yarn. This is, I love this yarn in blush sparkle. It's a metallic yarn as hence the shininess. And uh, I won't be using this in the future, but I already filmed the whole thing. So I'm just gonna work with what I have, but I'm pretty sure you guys are smart enough to know what I'm doing. <laughs> All right, go ahead and Netflix and chill then for the next 10 rounds and with only single crochet and I'll see you in a little bit. Okay, as you can see here, I'm a little bit naughty with my stitch marker. I don't move it up for every round when I go to Netflix and chill, that's just me, but I visually can keep track of my projects this way. Don't do that if that is too much for you. <laughs> don't follow my naughty footsteps here. So for round 15, we are going to work just as 
an increased stitch into that first stitch of the previous round and then you will work single crochet into the next six stitches and that will give us a grand total of eight stitches for round 15. Pretty simple, pretty similar to round four where you increase in the first stitch and then resume regular single crochets all the way around. And uh, after this part, we will have an even longer Netflix and chill moment. And uh, you'll get to see how long this tube gets. Um, it can be kind of fun looking. Um, and uh, But before we get to that, I kind of want to show you exactly what we're doing here. So we're just working on creating um, just a couple increases. The headband is tight. For me, my headband is tapered. I've worked a lot of styles of headbands. Uh, in my mouse ear making life and uh, I'm just going to show you here what it looks like already with these 15 rounds complete how much we're covering here as I slide that on so there we have it there is that bit of the head being covered so our Netflix and chill moment here is going to take us all the way back around to the opposite part of the headband so work that up and I will see you guys in a little bit Alrighty, check us out. We got a lovely tubey thingy looking thing here. And our Netflix and chill was very successful, if I do say so myself. Um, of course, here I am being naughty again, not moving up my stitch marker, but you know, it is what it is. Uh, so for round 56, we are now going to work our first decreasing round. And it's going to be super similar to the increasing rounds. We're gonna take those first couple of stitches to work our decreasing stitch. And I'm zooming in here because I, for anyone that doesn't know how to do it, this is kind of like a quick intro. I would absolutely slow the video down or check out another video on this, but I'm working an invisible decrease. So that's inserting your hook into the front loop of the first stitch there. And then without yarning over, working under and up through the front loop of the next stitch and then yarn over pull through both of those front loops that's going to gather those together and then yarn over and pull through the those two loops on your hook and that's going to give us a really flat decrease here um, and avoid holes and it just looks all together better in my opinion once i learned that i was like oh my gosh my whole life has changed i felt like singing a whole new world from the aladdin movie I probably did actually, honestly, knowing myself. <laughs> um, and then you're gonna continue just working single crochet around. That's gonna decrease your stitch count by one, leaving you with a grand total of seven stitches for round 56. And after this, we have a pretty simple life again. We are gonna work another 10 rounds of single crochet. So that it will be a mini Netflix and chill moment and um, work that up and I will see you in a little bit. Alrighty, here we go. We have a lovely extra length here. Um, so what we're gonna do here is we are going to go ahead and gently, my yarn here is not being agreeable or stretchy at all. Um, once again, this is not going to be a yarn I use in the future for any tutorials because it's actually almost slightly thinner than a usual worsted weight yarn and it's just not flexible. So here we go. You're, it's gonna look like you still have so much length to go here, but what we're gonna do is to kind of make it easier on ourselves to finish up these last rounds of crochet, you're going to go ahead and overstretch that fabric so that it hangs off of the tip of the headband there. And so you have something flexible to crochet with because I'm telling you, I've tried this without doing it and it was such a hassle. And it's okay because you can shrink back the fabric and work it up and it will look so much easier. Okay, so here we go. That's overstretched. Let's work up the last rounds of this pattern. Okay, and then we're moving into the very last decreasing round for the headband cover. You're going to work a decrease into the first couple of stitches there, and then you're going to work single crochet into the next five stitches. So this is similar to um, 
the other decrease row that we did, just decreasing across the first two stitches and then single crochet into the rest of the stitches of that round. And that will give you back to our original stitch count of this headband cover, which is six single crochet stitches. And after this round, a very short Netflix and chill moment we have, you're just going to work up three single crochet rounds where you just single crochet all the way around for rounds 68 through 70. And that is all. After you finish those three rounds, I'll see you in a little bit. Um, you're gonna have to fasten off and just weave, close that circle up with your tail and then just weave that tail back into your work. So you're seeing me fight the stitch marker. I don't know why I do this. I should just move it up with every round, but that's just my toxic trait right now as a maker lately. I've just been lazy about my stitch marker. Don't do like me. Use your stitch marker. You have plenty, I'm sure, if you're a normal maker like myself. You have a nice collection of them, so don't be afraid to actually use them. <laughs> um, yes, and once again, um, thanks for hanging in there so far with me. Uh, sometimes it's not an exact science figuring out how to film these videos, and um, the headband does make things a little awkward, so that's why you see my camera kind of go in and out because of the height of my project in the background. Um, Surprisingly enough, the background actually makes it easier for me to film because it kind of aligns with the grid of a editing frame. So yeah, so here we go. Um, get to the end of round 70, fasten off, weave in that end, and then redistribute that fabric once everything is weaved in and closed up so that the fabric of the headband cover is equally distributed across the span of the headband. Alrighty, now we're gonna get that measuring tape out and before we move on to anything else in this pattern We are going to do a little prep for chapter four the final assembly Just so we have this ready to go and we can just do all the sewing at once so um, In order to do this you are going to need to do one side at a time and Excuse me as I trim away a tail that I thought was hidden in there <laughs> And you're going to see why these locking stitch markers really help us out in this part of the pattern. So with your measuring tape, starting with one tip end of the headband, measure up the side of the headband until you get to six and three quarters approximately. 
and then with a locking stitch marker you're going to put that stitch marker around the post of the nearest stitch just like that lock it in place and there we go that's our first place stitch marker and we're gonna do the same exact thing to the other side mirror image style measure from tip of the headband all the way around until you find the six and three quarter inch mark spot and then with that stitch marker go ahead and put that and lock it around the post of the nearest stitch and then just kind of see those and make sure they look pretty similar if it doesn't you can take it out like i'm doing here and kind of move it up or down or however you feel and there we go. And this is just going to help us know what row we're sewing into later on, and you'll see. And then for our second set of stitch markers, you're measuring from that placed stitch marker down the side of the headband and find that two and a half inch spot and lock a stitch marker around that, marking that row off. And then repeat the same on the other side using one of those inner stitch markers, measuring down the side of the headband two and a half inches and then placing a stitch marker around the post of the nearest stitch. And then once you have all of these locked into place, kind of set it down in front of you, look at it, make sure it looks mostly symmetrical. And there we go. All right, chapter two of this pattern for the video side of it is going to be pretty simple. I'm just going to take that pre-made bow that I had you do before getting into this tutorial and we're just gonna um, together weave in that in that initial foundation tail excuse me I cannot speak today and uh, doing this is just gonna allow you to make the bow wraps a lot faster and you won't have to weave in all the ends at once then once that is woven in and out of the way you're going to find all of those chain two skip two sections of your bow which are usually in the end and the beginning of every round but we're going to rotate them and collect them into the center of the bow now once those are lined up just like that you are going to turn your bow around and then go ahead get that tail ready for some wraps you're going to pinch the center of the bow together and then take your very long tail and start making wraps around the center of the bow you can do these as tightly as you want um, I would not do them loosely it will give you a headache later and as a rule of thumb for this particular bow with this weight of yarn I usually do at least 30 wraps um, 25 for the kid size bow just because you know it's not as it's not as big and um, when you have the amount of wraps that you like or prefer finish your last wrap in the back of the bow you should at least have a 12 to 18 inch long tail that will be used for sewing later very important and then without letting that unravel, flip the bow over, hold that tail, and then get your crochet hook. And we're going to insert the crochet hook underneath the wraps that you just made, just like that. Careful not to go through any stitches. Loosely yarn over and pull that yarn underneath all of those newly made yarn wraps, just like that. So now you have a loop pulled up from underneath those wraps. Yarn over and pull through that loop on your hook and then one more time to fasten off pulling that tail all the way through and then um, this part is always so hard for me I don't know why but go ahead and and tighten that so it becomes a nice neat knot on the back of your bow and that is all finished up and so once you're done with that super simple just flip it back over kind of eat, uh, work on that fabric so it's a little more fluffy it's evenly distributed on either side you're gonna, and if you didn't interrupt any of the stitching in the bow you should easily be able to just pull that fabric as much as you want and there we go there's our bow so cute okay welcome to chapter three of this pattern where we're going to work on the ears so we already have these four pre-made ear bases that i had you work on go ahead and um just have those ready but you're not going to need them to begin so just kind of set them off to the side we're going to grab our complementary color yarn and we're going to make what's called an ear strip which is the kind of connector piece for our ear base sides so with that you want to start off with a slip knot that has a six inch long tail that is very important that will be helping us to sew later so we don't have to cut off extra pieces of our yarn and try to reattach them to our piece this just makes things cleaner and simpler 
And once we are ready to begin, row one is very simple. You're gonna begin with a chain three. I know, that's so many chains. <laughs> And then we are going to work across the chain, but we're going to work across into the back bumps of the foundation chain. Now, now I know that you can do this in the regular parts of the chain, but I tend to go into the back bumps. It just, again, makes everything cleaner. It makes seam work so much easier. So trust me on this. If you haven't done it before, try it now. See if you like it. And the back bump is just that kind of like horizontal bar on the back of a chain. Going into the second chain from the hook, work a single crochet. And then into the last chain from the hook, another single crochet. Again, both into the back bumps. If you're uncomfortable doing that, don't worry about it. Do them as normal. And then chain one and turn your work. And that is completing row one of our ear strip. And row two is very simple. It's our row repeat from here on out. You're going to work single crochet across, chain one and turn. And you are going to work this for as many rows as you have stitches in your stitch count for that last round of the ear base. So the adult version, it's going to be 42. And then the child size version, you're going to do 35. Yep, so we're going to do 42 rows of single crochet across, chain one and turn or 35 if you are working the kid size and that's about it this is very this is the easiest part of the whole pattern i promise the next part mm, a little trickier but we will work that slowly together so never you fear woven tails designs is here all right you have what looks like to be a very long rectangle lots to work with here we are going to dive right into connecting our ear bases together using this ear strip and um, a seaming stitch that you may have not seen before so take your time with this part of the chapter we're going to break it down into three phases and each seaming stitch is going to be worked into the raw edges of that ear strip you just made and if you're not familiar with raw edges, this is a quick introduction. That's just kind of like the edge on the side of every row of this strip. It's kind of jaggedy, but um, it's pretty consistent. It should be pretty consistent as long as you chain one and turn. And then you'll also work into the third loops of the half double crochet stitches from the ear base. So that's the top of the stitches. Looks like regular V's. And then the third loop is found on the back side, wrong side of your ear base. And that is that horizontal bar. So notice that when you go through it, you're not going through the top of a stitch, but it is going to bring the tops of the stitches forward, which will um, result in actually a very clean edge when we go to join. So go ahead, reinsert that hook. Um, you're still chaining one at the end of that last row. And to begin our seaming stitches, I'm going to go nice and slow for these first couple of them so you can see. You're going to every time always insert your hook first into a raw edge. So the next one here, I actually use the place that the last stitch was made as my first raw edge. I usually go with like kind of like the bumps of what I see on the edge of the uh, ear strip. You're going to pick up your ear base and then you're going to locate the first half double crochet stitch. Have the right side of the ear base facing you, that's very important. N don't go into the chain two, you're gonna locate that third loop or that bar on the back of that stitch. And the easiest way to do this with this first one, go from wrong side to right side with your hook through the top of the stitch and then kind of hook underneath, like you're going back out the way you came and that should catch under that third loop. So um, you can see it easier than I can explain it, but there we go. Put your hook into that with that raw edge still on your hook. So we got third loop and a raw edge on our hook. Pick up that yarn, just like so. You're going to grab some yarn, yarn over ever so slightly here. And here you see me kind of dance with the yarn because I'm like, wait, which way do I yarn over? And then you're going to gently pull that yarn through the third loop first. Regrip if you need to and pull that through the raw edge that we had first inserted our hook into and then lastly pull that through the loop on your hook and that technically is making a slip stitch but our slip stitch is connecting 
two pieces together. So we're gonna repeat that. Insert your hook into the next raw edge, which is the next kind of like open hole that I see, um, which looks like the place that the first stitch was made in the bottom round there. And then insert your hook into the next third loop of the next stitch. Should be easier to find this time. Just like that, yarn over, pull through the third loop, pull through the raw edge, and then finally pull through the loop on your hook to complete that seaming stitch. All right, now continue to do this all the way around your work. Insert your hook into the raw edge first, into the third loop next. Grab some yarn, pull through the third loop, pull through the raw edge, pull through the loop on your hook. Amazing. Look at that, that looks so great. Now, again, if you're a little wary of this method, you could technically work into the back loop of the half double crochet stitch, but I really would advise against that. This creates a very beautiful, seamless, clean look. You'll see with the finished product later. So if you just kind of want to watch what I'm doing first and then see what it looks like afterwards and then test it out for yourself, by all means. These are your ears. This is going to be a learning challenge, but it's not impossible, I promise you. And as you join these pieces together, the ear strip is naturally going to curve with the circle shape of the ear base and your last seaming stitch will work into the last stitch of the ear base but don't work into that chain two that's very important the chain two is really just there to kind of like use for sewing later to kind of tack down the corners of our ear base and the last raw edge is going to be and again, I apologize, my camera is not really in love with the yarn that I chose. Um, the last raw edge is gonna be the actual bottom of the foundation chain that we had from row one. And there we have it. Um, I'm gonna do this last seaming stitch with you here so you're not entirely alone. Um, so here I am, I'm going to insert my hook into that. Those are what the unworked loops look like when we work into the back bump of our foundation chain. So that becomes a really clean edge for us to use. And that's why I love doing that method of working to the back bump. So insert your hook into that last raw edge right there. Insert your hook into the last third loop, not the chain two. Pull through both of those places and the loop on your hook. And now we go into phase two. Chain one you're going to go ahead and work a slip stitch into that same space that you worked the last seaming stitch into. Then you're going to slip into the next raw edge, which is the next set of unworked loops from row one of the ear strip, chain one and rotate your work. There we go. Phase two is really easy. I promise that's the easiest part of this whole situation. <laughs> Okie dokie, so grabbing that second ear base, phase three is literally the same thing as phase one. However, we're working with the second ear base and we are working now along the right side of our ear strip on the raw edges. So what you, to start off our first seaming stitch, we're gonna insert our hook into the same place as that last slip stitch that was made in phase two. You're going to locate the first stitch of the of the last round of the ear base and get into that third loop from that first stitch there we go just like that you kind of saw my little trick there again to catch the third loop just that first one is always like a tighter stitch I find so that's why it's sometimes a little hard to find and then pull through both of those and the loop on your hook same way that we did it with phase one we're just working down the other side of the ear strip and the other side of the ear strip is going to look slightly different but as long as you're consistent and in going into each next raw edge you should be fine so again work along joining those two pieces together and um, this is going to be fun because once it's done it's going to kind of look like a little uh, pita pocket <laughs> and it's Pretty, uh, pretty cool actually. The seaming stitches kind of create this ridge that our structure of our foam insert 
kind of rest against. And that was actually a happy accident when I designed this. I did not plan for that. It just happened that when I went to create the seaming stitch method, it was just like super, super lucky that that became a bonus of this technique. All right, so I uh, work those up all the way around and I will see you for the last stitch. Okay, Magical Makers, here we are. We are going to work into that last raw edge, which is at the base of that first stitch from the last row. Work your hook into the last third loop of the last half double crochet from the ear base. Pull through those and the loop on your hook, and then you're going to go ahead from here and fasten off. Now, fasten off with a six inch long tail. That's very important because we will need that as well to sew the side of our ear down to the headband. Cool, pull that yarn through, knot it tight, and there we have it. We have a seamed ear. This is one ear complete. You will need to repeat all these steps to uh, join the other two ear bases to a new ear strip, but that's what it looks like all seamed up. You can see how clean that edge is, really, really nice. Um, and to just finish this off, we're just gonna stuff this together so you can see, and then you can do all the steps again for the second ear. Go ahead and grab one of those pre-cut ear inserts. And if I didn't say this before in the other videos, you can absolutely use cardboard for this instead of foam if foam is not accessible. I just like using foam because it is um, a lot more durable in the long run. I feel like cardboard tends to break down over time with humidity and just, I'm always thinking about people that go to the parks in Florida. <laughs> That humidity is nuts. So I just easily slip that on inside. You shouldn't see any of the pre-cut foam sticking out. And then I take some polyfill and I lightly stuff the ear on either side, or on both sides, I should say, of the foam. And less is more here. Surprisingly, this can get pretty overpacked. So this is just personal preference. I do a little bit at first. I kind of pull the poly full apart and then I kind of layer it in flat pieces on the inside that's my usual technique but it is not uh, it is not necessarily the best technique it's just what I do so go ahead and stuff the other side da -da 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 -da. I hope you've been enjoying this so far. If you have, please let me know in the comments down below, would you be someone getting foam or would you use cardboard? Can you think of any other materials you can use in, as an ear insert? I'd love to know. And there you have it, all done. Yay, so cool looking. I love it, I love it. Okay, from here, I just wanna show you what they look like side by side. Before you sew these onto the headpan, you're just gonna to wanna to compare them because once they're sewn on, it's really hard to add stuffing or change the uh, structure of the ear. So there we have it. Congratulations, you have made it to the very end of this pattern, the last chapter, the final assembly. We are now going to go ahead and begin the sewing process. So you're gonna need all your parts ready to attach at the ready here and we're going to work one ear at a time first and we'll add the bow later after the ears are in place the first 
thing we're going to do is we're going to sew down those ear strip sides to our headband and that's what we're sewing down onto the spots marked by the stitch markers. So it doesn't matter what ear you start with, um, but just make sure you thread a tapestry needle with one of the six inch long ear strip tails and find one of the outer stitch markers and that's going to mark the row that we will be sewing the edge of the ear strip down onto. So what I do here um, is really, again, just my technique. It's not, I don't, I didn't write the book on how to sew and I'm, I'm glad I didn't because I am truly an amateur sewist at best. I've never even worked with a sewing machine. So my methods are really just what I've done that works seamlessly for me. <laughs> And my clumsy hands so I'm just working like a couple of loose stitches into the headband then back into the bottom edge of the ear strip which again this is why I like using the uh, back bumps for the foundation chain of the ear strip because then you have something you can visibly see to work into and then I tighten those stitches I remove the stitch marker careful not to overly sew over top of that because you can break them actually I have broken a couple in making this video <laughs> And then you're going to continue to sew down that edge as much as you'd like. Um, it, there really is no right or wrong way to do this. This is just what I'm doing. So if you wanna watch what I do first and then kind of do it yourself, it's up to you. Um, you're gonna see me go underneath on the inside of the fabric of the headband cover and then back out the other side to kind of get to the other side of the ear strip and I kind of just do this a couple times once you have the amount of sewing stitches that you feel are enough to keep this nice and anchored you are just going to weave that tail back into your ear or the headband too if you'd like um, I just chose to go into the ear because there's more stuffing to kind of like secure and hide that you can also kind of knot it um, on one of these sides here and then kind of hide it in for added security. But again, it's totally up to you. And um, you're gonna see me weave it in a lot because I'm a little bit anal with weaving my ends in. <laughs> I don't know what's wrong with me. Maybe I just have PTSD from when I was like a new crocheter and I didn't know how to weave in ends well. So like I barely did it. And then everything came out when I wore my sweaters and my scarves and it just looked a hot mess all the time. And once you are good with that, you snip off the excess just like that. And you are going to repeat that same process with the other tail that we have from the other side of the ear strip. You're going to attach that down onto the inner adjacent stitch marker. So that same side of the headband with the six inch long tail from the other side of the ear strip, same ear. We're working one ear at a time. I promise it will save you a headache later. And um, again, just remove the stitch marker as soon as you can because I, I'm not kidding you. I think I broke three stitch markers doing this. Now these are like cheap plastic stitch markers I got, I think with like a magazine subscription that I used to have. Um, it was like a crochet magazine subscription. It wasn't like a small business shop. So I promise I'm not trashing any small business owner. Um, I just got these and I think they were like a freebie, but um, I, I swear by the locking stitch markers, I never really understood their value until I started working projects like this. My style as a designer, I do like seaming things together, so um, be forewarned if you ever work patterns by me in the future. Alrighty, next up we're gonna do for tacking, uh, we're gonna tack down this, the bottom edge here of our ear base to the headband itself. This is, I swear, the one thing that kept me sane when I was like, okay, if I were to create a sew version of these ears, how am I gonna keep my brain from losing its mind with things not being symmetrical or even and I didn't want to have too many sewing stitches on one side and not enough on the other and this is the hack that I found works so kind of like how sewists pin their pieces together before they seam them or sew them together this is what we're doing here with our stitch markers I first tack down the opposite corner that the fasten off tail is at and then I find the middle kind of place of the bottom edge and I tack that down and I tack it right onto the headband cover. 
simple as that. And then it kind of stays in place so I don't get a little so happy with one side and then I realize I use up too many stitches on the, raw, on the bottom edge of the ear base. And essentially what we're sewing down here is the skipped stitches of the last round of the ear base. That's why we skip them so we kind of have this uh, more of like a flat edge to work with. Um, and this is what we glue down in the glue version of this. Um, again, there's no wrong or right way of doing this. I kind of take my time just in the beginning with the chain to uh, slip stitch part of the ear base on the corner here just because this is where you can get um, a bigger hole and stuffing can come through. So I kind of just take a little extra love into sewing this down onto the headband cover. When I'm sewing the edge down, and I don't know how easy it is to see on your computer here or phone as you're watching this, but I don't like for the bottom edge of the ear base to hang over onto the inside of the headband. I want it to remain flush with the side edge of the headband. And that will really help with a clean polished look. I know that a lot of people don't like to do sew projects because they can end up having such a varied and homemade look, but I promise you if you just take a little bit of extra time with this bit and carefully, and, and if you need more stitch markers here to tack the side down, by all means do so. Um, I just keep it at two because I already have two from the, um, the ear strips and such, but this is what I do, I just kind of go in and out, in and out. Um, if you're using variegated yarns and you're getting some color changes peeking through in weird places, um, I would recommend that you just kind of work your tapestry needle into the inside of some stitches from the headband and then into the inside of some stitches from the bottom edge of the ear base. And that will kind of, almost like if you're weaving in your ends, kind of hide the evidence of what you're doing. And as I reach the end here, um, again, I'm taking extra love with that chain to slip stitch bit in the corner. Um, and be careful and wary of your stitch marker because you can also, again, break it by over sewing around it. And gosh, you see my tail like catch on the other side of the headband, my goodness. And then remove it as soon as you can. And there we have it. And that's essentially what I do to it kind of sew down the side um, bottom edge of the ear base. From here, um, you can choose to either weave your end in or you can go back the way you came with some extra sewing stitches if you see there's some gaps. Um, you know, honestly, this yarn, please don't use this yarn. Do me a favor, do yourself a favor. Look at all those holes in the bottom. That's not because I am too tight of a crocheter or whatnot. I've made so many of these ears and this is why I don't recommend cotton yarn for my ears because the elasticity in the yarn just makes it like the, uh, the lack of elasticity, I should say, just creates these unnecessary holes every time there's an increased stitch. Like, I don't know how people use cotton yarn for Megarumi. Maybe I'm just using the wrong yarn, but some of these yarns are going to do this. Um, if you plan on selling these or gifting them, just know that like this could be a problem spot with stuffing coming out. So yeah, you have been warned, but I'm sure whatever you choose will be beautiful. Feel free to tag me in your ears on Instagram, on TikTok, on any of those social media platforms, Facebook. I have a Facebook group for this called the Ever After Club. So feel free to join that and share what you've made. All right, so that's one side, bottom edge, sewn down. It's pretty sturdy here. You're gonna go ahead and repeat that same thing, tacking the side down and um, putting that, um, putting those final touches on the other end, repeating all those same steps, tack it down, sew it down, and that's about it. If you've liked this video, please give me a thumbs up. Leave a comment down below. How did you find this video helpful? Do you like this version where you don't have to use glue or do you prefer to use the glue? I'm kind of like back and forth. I like this version because I can use my hand dyed yarns that I buy and I don't have to feel guilty about adding glue to them. Um, wow, look at that. So simple and it's a really strong connection. So this is going nowhere. Do the same exact steps that we just did for the other ear and I'll see you in a little bit.
And something else quick to note here, when you wear your headband, those ears are gonna kind of slightly go in a little bit. So the space between them is gonna get a little bit smaller. All right, now we are sewing the last part onto our headband. We're sewing the bow. And this is a pretty, again, kind of like do it in your own way kind of section. I just, I do it a little bit differently every time I make these, just because again, the yarn is gonna react differently depending on the kind of yarn you're using. Um, my first step here though is to just decide what front you want for your bow. I tend to actually use my best sewed down side as my back of my headband and the least a successful sewing job on the front because the bow is actually going to cover and draw your eye away from those mistakes so just pick your poison there all right thread your tapestry needle with that long tail left over from the bow you're going to work your your needle here into what you see visually as the middle point um, and you don't have to sew your bow down onto the middle point. That's just me. It's, I go for symmetry here. You can easily do a really fun style of bow by kind of making it lopsided or attaching it to one of the ears. Um, make one stitch there. And then I kind of go back in with my tapestry needle to the yarn wraps. Um, and I make a couple of more stitches like that into the yarn wraps, into the headband cover and back and back and back. And once I have that secure, you're gonna see me working my needle into the nearest stitches on the back side of the bow to where I just sewed the, um, the yarn wraps to the headband. I kind of pull it up so I can kind of get a better eye for it. I kind of try to go with also like the bottom stitches there and not so much in like the middle of the bow, if you can help it. This part's a little fiddly, um, but I find going through that stitch really, really helps. So I go from like inside to outside of that stitch and then I work into the following place next to where I was just working a bunch of sewing stitches, just like that. Pretty simple again this is why that curved tapestry needle comes in handy because you're really able to kind of work in there without um, stabbing yourself or kind of going into some weird stitches that you weren't planning on and I just repeat this all over as many times as I think I need to and um, I'm just gonna give you a little precursor narrative here once you're done sewing this bow down onto the headband in this part of the ears, something I like to do is tack the top of the headband, or sorry, tap, tack the top of the bow. Oh, here we go, you're seeing me do it now. Um, I fastened off whatever I was sewing because I was satisfied with it and I tack the back upper part of the bow onto the ear itself on that same side. And I'm doing that because one of the best pieces of advice that I got from one of my testers actually back with the original pattern is that when people were wearing these bows or excuse me these ears to the parks they found that the bows throughout the day because they weren't tacked onto the headband ended up getting droopy and I think it's just because the crochet fabric is a little more susceptible to weather <laughs> again they were in Florida it is so humid I live here so I should know um, this place is like crazy in the summer and if it's not your humidity it's just if you happen to go to any of like the parks that have like water anywhere like animal kingdom has like some water areas like you're just gonna get unfortunately a lot of uh, hu like moisture onto your ears so just keep that in mind um, you don't have to do too much to tack it down just maybe like one or two stitches and then kind of weave it back into your work and that's our bow finished I hope you like it give me a thumbs up please Thank you so much for tuning into this tutorial where we made the Ever After Ears, but the no glue version. If you've liked this video, please, once again, give me a thumbs up. Let me know this was up your alley. Please leave a comment down below with any questions on the pattern. You can always reach me on my socials at Instagram and in Ravelry, all the places that most people are at. And also, please stay tuned. I'm going to be starting to release a lot of different bows and options for mouse ears that are different from the standard circle. So if that's something you're into and you really want 
want to get into customizing your own ears, please stay tuned. Please hit the bell button and that will let you know of any future tutorials as soon as they drop. I'm also going to be dropping some vlog videos as well, so things to watch while you're making. Have a creative day adding magic to your stitches in your own way and I will see you in the next tutorial. Bye-bye. Thank you.